Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's easy for us to think that this is strange for Jesus to be baptized in the Jordan River. It seems odd to us. Why would Jesus, who is without sin, yearn for a, a baptism for the forgiveness of sins? He has no sins to remove. And so also, it's easy for us to think that a baptism on a Sunday morning is strange. The pastor puts water on the head of a baby and speaks some words. The hymn that we just sang said, yeah, baptism, the mortal eye sees just water. But we will learn today that Jesus' baptism is not strange. Rather, it is a wonderful event. Because in Jesus' baptism, he took our place. We are now declared righteous. So also, in a baptism, we had one early service. Reagan Penn, was she was baptized. In a baptism, it also is a wonderful event. Because we were saved from our sins and we're clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. One day, a man by the name of John came out of the wilderness and was preaching repentance and the forgiveness of sins, and he was also baptizing there by the Jordan River. Many people came from Jerusalem and Judea and the surrounding area uh, to hear his message and be baptized. Suddenly, Jesus shows up. He walks into the water. And John thought that this was strange for Jesus to be here, for Jesus to receive a baptism. He said, I have have need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? Again, John is a little shocked. He's a little surprised at this whole thing. Well, who is John? Yeah, he's sinful by nature, like you and me. He's also a child of Adam and Eve, like we are. John the sinner should be baptized by Jesus, the sinless one. It's kind of like the doctor asking the patient to heal him. Who is Jesus? He is the Son of God in human flesh. He, is, he has no sin to confess. He had no need for repentance. He has nothing to wash away. And yet Jesus says, let it be so now. For it is thus fulfilling for us to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, let this baptism continue. Sinners came to John's baptism to get rid of sins, but Jesus came to the Jordan to put on sins. Jesus is the Lord of all, God in human flesh. And yet, at the Jordan, he becomes a servant a servant for all. He is the sinless one who came to take upon himself the sin of the whole world. 1 Corinthians 1, our epistle reading for today, says, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what was weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world to bring no nothing things that are and what we think is foolish like Jesus's baptism uh, and taking up and and, and yet God sees Jesus's baptism as the only means of salvation for sinners what we think is weak and low and despised in the world namely Jesus being baptized and taken upon our sins, God sees as the only way for us to be declared righteous. Don't see baptism as something strange or foolish or weak or low or despised. Rather, see it as a wonderful event the way to be forgiven, and the way to be given the righteousness of Christ. Jesus, therefore, is our substitute. 
He's taking our place. Imagine taking a bath in someone else's bath water. It's rather disgusting thought, right? When I, when I was a little boy, that's exactly what my mom did. Uh, she made me, along with my two other siblings, take a bath in the same bath water. I think my mother probably wanted to save on water or something. I'm sure that the Jordan River was dirty water, but it was also filled with the greed of the tax collectors, the filth of the prostitutes, the gossip of the so-called sinners of the day. But our sins were also there as well, our sins of immorality, deceit, drunkenness, pride, slander, greed, and the list goes on and on. Now, I've never had the chance to go to the Jordan River and see what, what the water's really like. Um, I'm sure that it was, it is dirty. Do you remember Naaman, the, uh, the one who had leprosy? Well, the prophet Elisha told him, if you go wash in the Jordan River seven times, you'll be cleansed of your leprosy. And Naaman's like, no, I don't want to go to the Jordan River. I want to go to the rivers in Damascus and elsewhere. Why the Jordan River? But a servant girl encouraged Naaman to do what the prophet said. And so Naaman goes to the Jordan River, dips himself uh, seven times, and when he comes out, he comes out clean, healed of his leprosy. Now, it wasn't the water that did it. It was the word of God joined to that water that caused Naaman to be cleansed and healed. And so also in our baptism, the thing, the significant thing is not the water, or where the water came from, to be honest, it comes from the sink. The important thing is the word of God connected to the water. The small catechism asks the question, how can water do such great things? And the answer is, certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things, along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in, holy, in the Holy Spirit. So the power, again, is in the word, not in the water. One person who had the chance to visit the Holy Land brought back some water from the Jordan River. Uh, to be used for a family baptism. And when the pastor looked at the water, he didn't want to put his hand in it, let alone put that on someone's head because it was so dirty. But Christ is not afraid to step into this water. He stepped into a sinner's bath water. He stepped into the pollution of our idolatry and immorality. He stood in the water with the tax collectors and the outcast. He stepped into our sin. He became the adulterer, the drunkard, the liar, the thief, the blasphemer, and the murderer. And Jesus soaked up all of our sin and, and its death into his own flesh so that he might put to death, be put to death for our sins once and for all. And that's what Jesus meant by fulfilling all righteousness. Therefore, Jesus' baptism and, and the cross go together. You cannot have one without the other. They, were both, they are both connected. In the Jordan, Jesus was baptized for sinners, and on the cross, he died for sinners. Both in the Jordan and the Calvary, Jesus is our substitute. When Jesus was baptized and when he died on the cross, there was a great exchange that took place. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 puts it this way. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus took upon himself our sin, our guilt, our punishment, we then received from him forgiveness of sins. Jesus gets treated like a sinner, and yet we are declared righteous. 
Jesus was baptized into our sin, and we were baptized into his righteousness. He was baptized into the curse of the law, and we are baptized into God's blessing and favor. Tom was one of four participants to run in the high school relay race at the, at the state level. He was one of the key competitors for his team, but unfortunately when he was preparing, he pulled a muscle. And the coach then chose an alternate member of the track team to run in Tom's place. The relay team ran, and because of the substitute, they won the race. And during the award ceremony, the substitute put the war reward over Tom, even though Tom did not run the race. In our race toward heaven, we have failed. We were injured in the Garden of Eden, but Jesus is our substitute. He took our place. He won the victory. And in our baptism, he placed the benefits of his victory upon us, and we are now clothed in the robe of Christ's righteousness. Jesus once said, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. And so this morning, Reagan was brought to Jesus by means of baptism. Nothing prevented her from being baptized, and she is now saved and given the gift of eternal life. Praise God. During Jesus' baptism, the Father was present speaking. Jesus was standing there in the water, and the, and, the, and the Spirit, Holy Spirit, anointed Jesus by means of a dove. And so also in our baptism, we were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. During Jesus' baptism, the heavens were opened. And, and heaven is opened to you through faith in Christ. During Jesus' baptism, the Spirit descended like a dove upon Jesus. And so also in your baptism, the Holy Spirit gave birth to spirit, gave birth to faith in Christ. During baptism, he was declared to be the Father's beloved Son. And so also in our baptism, we were declared to be the Father's beloved sons and daughters in his kingdom. During Jesus' baptism, the Father was well pleased with Jesus, and so also in your baptism, God is well pleased in you because of Jesus. Martin Luther writes in the large catechism, thus you see plainly that baptism is not a work which we do, but a treasure which God gives and faith grasps. Just as Jesus upon the cross is not a work, but a treasure offered to us in the word and received by faith. And he goes on to say, no greater jewel can adorn body and soul than baptism. For through it, we obtain perfect holiness and salvation, which no other kind of life and no other work on earth can acquire. So dearly beloved, your baptism is is very important in your life. It is foundational to who you are. Even on bad days, your baptism will be a source of comfort for you. Baptism is what being a Christian is all about. Your baptism took place in the past, to be sure, but it is a present reality. It defines who you are in God's eyes. You now live for God and for the neighbor. And not for the flesh or the devil. You are now a light in a dark world. And others see Christ in you. In your love and care for one another. So when you are burdened by the weight of a sin that condemns you. When you are troubled that you are a sinner before God. When the voice within you causes you to doubt your belief in Christ. When life in general weighs heavy upon you. Remember your baptism. Get your certificate out. Look at the date. Remember that in baptism, you are now and always will be a child of God 
Who are you? You are a baptized child of God and dearly loved by him. This is not a strange thing. Your baptism was a wonderful event for you. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus in a life everlasting. Amen. Amen.